We left off in our last episode where we were able to save our progress in a visual novel to a file on disk. The only issue is that we're saving this data in clear text which can be edited outside. To illustrate this, we can simply open up the file and change any of these variable types to change our data when we next load the novel. So we need to implement file encryption. I've got a file manager that I use for all of my projects that includes different forms of encryption, so I've copied functions from that to use in this project, and you can just download the new file manager from the description. First off, you see that we have two variants of save and load JSON, one for unencrypted data and another for encrypted data. When we save encrypted data, we convert it into a JSON string and then run it through a mathematical bit operation. We then save the bits directly, and that creates our encrypted save file. The act of converting our JSON string to binary values is relatively simple, and it makes use of the binary formatter, which as you may know, can only format serializable objects. Since a string is serializable, we can turn that into a byte array quite easily. In order to use the binary formatter, you need to include the namespace, as I did at the top of this script. Once we get our byte array, we run it through a simple mathematical operation where we XOR each byte against every other byte in our key. Here is that process. It's a very simple method of symmetrical encryption, but for a visual novel, this is all we need for securing the data. To take it a step further, you can even obfuscate your code. And for that, I will link an obfuscation package in the description. You just import it into your project and follow the instructions. It's a demo, so you can only obfuscate two scripts, I think. But this operation works using the same key or byte array to change another array of bytes, thus encrypting or decrypting our data. Once that's done, we write the bytes directly to a file to create our secret document. This just uses the file write all bytes function. Then we have our normal load JSON function, which we're using right now. And then we've got our load encrypted JSON, which is what we're going to use. This gets the bytes of the file into an array by using the file.readAllBytes function. So we gather those encrypted bytes into an array, and then we use the same XOR operation with the same keys to decrypt the bits. After that, we reconstruct the string from those bytes to get our original JSON data. This again uses the binary formatter and returns an object, since that's what's constructed from the bytes. This either returns an array of objects if multiple objects were saved, or it returns one if only one object was saved, which is what we're doing right now with our file. So the bits are changed, then the string is rebuilt, and then the original class is recreated from the data and returned. And that is our save and load function now. So clearly we've got some small changes to make in our novel controller to actually use the encryption now. So let's enter that and come to our save function. Let's start by saving our chapter files in an encrypted format. So instead of save JSON, we just use save encrypted JSON. And we're going to need an encryption key. Our encryption key is an array of bytes. So that's a variable that I'll define temporarily down below, just so we can see this work. Remember that since this is a byte array, you could actually make your key a string, and then just convert it before each use. That way, it's like a memorable password. And now I can use that key set as a parameter. So there we go, that'll save my data file and encrypt it. So let's come to the load function, and when a file is automatically created, we need to make sure that it's saved the same way. Now all that's left is to make sure we load the encrypted file. Now I'm going to change the game file number so we can compare both encrypted and plain text files against each other. Go ahead and launch the game, and a new file should be saved if you change that game number index. My console tells me that file was saved, so that's good. Go out and come back into Unity so we can import that file into the Explorer. And notice when we click on it that it appears blank. This is because it now contains characters that Unity doesn't know how to interpret. But if you open it in Notepad, you can see now that it's much more secure than what we had before. Our text now looks garbled, and there's no way anyone could open it to change those data values. 
Putting them side by side, you can clearly see what a difference this makes. This is all the security we could possibly need for a game as simple as a visual novel in mind. Next up, it's finally time to make our main menu. We've got our chapter files, but now we need a way to connect everything together and finish our novel, and this means a main menu. So let's create a new scene and call it our main menu. Our first order of business is making a canvas so we can actually get our UI elements in the scene. Then I'll be making a simple image background. Scale it up and let's go ahead and set those anchors. Then give yourself a nice background. I'm a simple person and this isn't a serious novel, so my main menu is going to be pretty basic. But I forgot my images were textures and not sprites, so I had to change that image to a raw image. And also give yourself a good title. I came up with a right stupid one, but it fits the plot perfectly. Next we want some buttons. Think about what you want your main menu to do. I know that I want to start a new game, load a game, or access settings, so there are three buttons right there but the main menu was still pretty plain, so I added in two images. Now let me show you something. If you're not familiar with a component called a canvas group, then let me go ahead and acquaint you with that. First off, we need to add a panel into our UI and then parent everything we just made to it. On that panel, you can set its color to be transparent so you won't even be able to tell it's there. Then let's add a canvas group component to it through the inspector by searching for it. What a canvas group does is really neat. It controls the transparency of every UI element attached to it, so all children of this panel can fade in and out through a single variable on the canvas group. Let me just remove the background from this panel so that way everything but the background fades in, just like that. For my main menu, I've decided to make it fade through a pure white screen, so I'll be adding an overlay panel with a full white color on it. I'm just going to name this one my main panel, so I know what that is. And now let me make my overlay pane. This can just be a plain old image, because all I'm interested in is the alpha color. So that'll fade out to reveal my main menu in a sort of flashing appearance. I'll control this through an animation. If you use an animation, you want to make sure your animation window is open. So I'll come to the Windows header and open the window called Animation. This window allows us to make and edit animations on any object with an animator controller attached to it, or any object that's a child of another object with a controller on that. Make sure you've selected the object you want to animate and hit Create. Then choose a location to save your animation before you start editing it. For my own or organization, I'm making an animations folder inside of my assets folder. Then a subfolder for UI animations. With our animation loaded, we can hit the red circle or record button to automatically record any keyframes. And what's great about Unity is the animations can record variable changes in scripts. This is very useful as we're going to be animating the panel's color. The first keyframe will have the alpha at 255, or full, and then the last keyframe, somewhere around 2 seconds, will have the alpha at 0. Since the record button is pressed, I only have to change the values for them to be recorded, and if we hit play, then you can see the animation play and our panel fades out, revealing the main menu. Just make sure when you're done recording, you stop the record button, otherwise you're going to get unexpected keyframes. I want to disable the raycast target for this panel so it doesn't block my buttons either. Now let me make another animation for when it's fully faded out. Alternatively, you could just make sure the animation doesn't loop, so once it's complete, it stays invisible. To edit your animation controller and how animations transition from one to another, you need to open the animator window with your animated object selected. Notice it has both of my animations already in it. 
The bright orange is the default animation and is what plays on start. The gray ones need to be transitioned to in order to play. So you can right click a button and hit transition to, and then click another button to make a transition. For visibility in the editor, I'm going to make sure record is unchecked so I don't edit my animations, and set the visibility of my fade panel to zero, so my main menu is visible in the editor at all times. Then if I hit play, the animation should automatically play and reveal my scene. There we go. And yes, I also added music, but my buttons don't appear selectable. Let's exit out and check that. Go ahead and select all of your buttons, and then view the button component in the inspector. Just make sure interactable is checked first and foremost, and then change your highlighted color value to something that's more noticeable. I like the look of a bluish green, but that's just me. Now play and move your mouse over the buttons. The only problem is when we click a button, it stays highlighted even when our mouse is off of it. And this is actually because of the auto navigation. So if we set that value to none, then that problem won't happen anymore. If that is none, then we can click and hover and everything looks just fine. We're going to leave off right here and pick up this weekend with part 2, where we bring a loading pane to life, both for our main menu and inside the novel. Everything is already completed, it just needs the video editing. So, in the meantime, I want you to come up with a design for your loading panel, where you'll display all of your saved game files and have that ready for this weekend. If you've already got a design in mind, it'll make it much easier once we start to do it.